What is up, Earthnoids and Spacenoids? I am just a simple new type, and in this episode, we are diving back into UC-0088 and Gundam Double Zeta. Last time, the Argama left Shangri-La and is in search of Levian Rose. In this episode, Lena will be captured by Glimmy Toto, and we will see the pivotal Double Zeta in action. We will also see Kara push Mashimar to the side and take control of the Indra. So let's get into this. Kara teases Mashimar. The two touch boobs. He proclaims into Kara's recorder that he will be the one to take down Zeta Gundam. Kara isn't just someone reporting for Haman. She is also a mobile suit pilot. On the Argama, Dinner is attacking Judo. Eno comes and helps him. Judo asks Eno if it is Bicha and Mondo that are the Xeon collaborators. Shinta and Kum are sad about Fa leaving the ship. They want to leave and head to Shangri-La, but they are too young to pilot. That is when they pass by Gotten, who is a prisoner. He talks shit about Mashimer and says he will be their pilot. He convinces the kids to let him out. As they head to the hangars, Rue notices them. Gotten pushes Shinta and leaves. He runs into Eno and holds him captive. They head to the hangar and he hits Ashtonaj before getting into the core fighter, but they won't open the hatch. He still has Eno hostage. Judo wants to go out in Zeta, but there is nothing they could really do while on the hangar. Lena comes in and tricks him with dinner. I hate it when dinner attacks. Meanwhile, Beach and Mondo go and open the hangar. They take off. Ru and Judo take off as well. While Eno is putting on his spacesuit, the core fighter crashes. Eno and Gotten fly out. He just so happens to run into Mashimar in the Hamma Hamma. He picks up Gotten and they proceed towards the Argama. Kara is watching Mashimar from afar. She is piloting the R Jarja. The AMX 104 R Jarja was created based off of an old design that was the evolution of the Gion. This is a close combat mobile suit. It is equipped with a heat bayonet, a customized beam saber, and two variable shield, which are shoulder mounted shields that can rotate to protect the rear, sides, or front. The variable shields also have two missile pods mounted on it. She is extremely turned on by her mobile suit. When she gets inside of a mobile suit, she tends to react this way. Mashimer heads in and attacks the Argama. Bright tries to get assistance from Levian Rose. On Levian Rose, they happen to have picked up Eno. They get a call from the Argama requesting assistance. Judo and Zeta goes and attacks one of the Gazas. He is angry and assumes that Eno is dead. Mondo and Bicha go to the hangar and steal one of the core fighters. As they take off, they run into Kara and is captured by her R Jarja. She throws the core fighter, but Judo comes in and attacks her. Kara grabs Zeta and Mashimer comes in and shoots down Zeta's head. It is heavily damaged. As Judo drifts off, he notices Bicha and Mondo in a crashed core fighter. He bails from Zeta and gets into the core fighter. As Judo takes off, Kara prevents Mashimer from chasing him because of her soul. Okay. Judo runs into Rue in the core base. She tells him that the core fighter is a part of the new mobile suit and to follow her. But first, Bicha and Monda have to leave. Judo kicks them out into space. He syncs up with the core base and it transforms into Gundam Double Zeta. The MSZ-010 Double Zeta Gundam is another mobile suit that was a part of the Anaheim Electronics Zeta program. Just a quick rundown on the Zeta program mobile suits so far. It started with Gamma, which eventually became the Rick Diaz. Then the Delta Gundam, which evolved into the Hyakushiki. We then, of course, saw Camille and Judo pilot the Zeta. This mobile suit was supposed to bring the functionality of Grandpa Gundam and the G-Armor into a single machine. This unit has a more advanced core block system. The core base acts as its mobile armor mode, and it also has a G-Fortress mode that is used for bombing runs. Its three parts include the core base, core top, and core fighter, which all make up Gundam Double Zeta. According to an old Gunpla model, the engine installed in the backpack is originally meant for ships and could supply power for an entire ship. It also incorporates a movable frame and magnetic coating. Like the Zeta, there is a simplified version of the Psychomo system installed using a biosensor. The Double Zeta Gundam has a number of strong weapons, including two hyper beam sabers, which are also usable as beam cannons, a 21 tube missile launcher installed on the backpack, and a high mega cannon on the forehead. More on the high mega cannon later. Other weapons include Vulcans and a wing shield mounted on the forearms. Mashimer begins fighting Judo once again, but he is way faster now. Double Zeta uses the beam cannon and destroys the Hamahama shield. Mashimer retreats for now. Judo grabs the remains of Zeta Gundam and returns to the Argama. Back on the Indra, Mashimer wants to leave because of Kara. Glimmy holds on to Mashimer as he doesn't want him to leave. 
モビルスーツのコクピットに座ると興奮しちゃうような安っぽい女なんですよ Tell me about it, Glimmy. Everyone except for Glimmy seems to be happy that he is leaving. He pushes Glimmy off his shuttle and bails. Kara wants to ram the Levian Rose. As she is aroused by this plan, she shoves Gotten's face into her boobs. Judo is supposed to be bringing supplies from Levian Rose, but they happen to stumble onto a Zaku. Being junkers, they decide to take it. Bright yells at him but says, What? I can't hear you. Manofsky particle density is too high. La 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 la. Which I'm amazed that this is the first time someone did that to get out of a conversation. Elena wants to go out in the core fighter and take care of business, but she can only go out with Rue. Once again, Bright is losing control of his crew. <laughs> oh, Bright. Oh, <laughs> you poor soul. Bright thinks of his terrorist son. Kara and Indra approach l e v i a n Rose. They begin firing on her. Space Cindy Lopper is turned on and they ram directly into the ship. Glimmy goes and launches in his Gaza. Glimmy chases down the core fighter to see if it is Rue. His masculinity was hurt when she shot him in the back. Rue thinks he has an Oedipus complex. Judo and the Junkers finally contact the Arguma. They tell him that Rue and Lena went out to fight since they were messing around with the Zaku. Judo jumps into action while Bicha touches El's boob. Glimmy catches the core fighter. Lena seems to be a new type as well as she reaches out to Judo in a moment of fear. Rue says she will go with Glimmy if she spares Lena. Once again, Rue tricks Glimmy and pushes him out into space. She gets back into the core fighter and takes off as Glimmy repels back to the Gaza. More Gazas launch. The three core fighters meet up finally to form Double Zeta, but they are being distracted from transforming. The Argama is making its way to the action. Eno jerry rigged Zeta Gundam with parts of the down e d Zaku to get it functioning. Eno launches in the Zeta Zaku. Only 180 degrees of the cockpit is currently working. This is because the old mono eye sensor from UC0079 didn't have the 360 degree sensor that these spoiled kids have today. Glimmy goes in to attack Zeta Zaku. This is Judo's opportunity to transform into Double Zeta. The l e v i a n Rose arms are tearing apart the Indra class ship. They try to get out of the range of the satellite. Kara launches in her R Jarja. Kara and Judo begin fighting with melee weapons. Judo is suddenly able to sense something in his head. It is Lena. She fell out of the core fighter. He fires off the high mega cannon. I didn't mention this earlier, but the high mega cannon, which is emitted from the head, has a 50 megawatt output. To give some perspective of how strong that is, it is 26.3 times as powerful as Grandpa's BOA XBR M7907G beam rifle and one fifth the power of the solar ray. This is the most powerful weapon we will see during the Neo Zeon War. It vaporizes the a r j a r j a s legs. Kara retreats. Double Zeta completely shuts off. Judo realizes the power of the high mega cannon and gets a good lesson about managing power in battle. Glimmy grabs Lena and takes her back to the Indra, thinking it was Rue. She tells Judo and, infuriated, chases after the ship. Unfortunately, there are too many dummy rocks everywhere and something, something, Manowski particle density, something, something. Judo does that thing that a lot of protags do where they shoot up in the air in anger. The Argama finally docks with l e v i a n Rose. Bright talks to the junk kids, minus Judo. He wants them to watch over Judo and make sure he doesn't go running off to find Lena. No one seems to be listening to him. Ku makes stew for Judo and she wants him to taste it. Ew, what is in that? L goes into the bathroom to find Judo in a spacesuit that he hid. He is trying to find Lena. L tries to calm him down. Bright comes in. Judo gets out of his spacesuit with comic timing. Mondo and Bicha learn the transformation process of Double Zeta. Of course, the two are going to steal the mobile suit once again. Judo goes to the hangar and sees that L is there with a spacesuit. While Double Zeta is going through tests, Judo tries to take the Gundam, but Ashtonaj stops him. On the Indra, Glimmy is teaching Lena proper table manners. She does come from a trash colony, but we are about to witness an interesting dynamic between these two that greatly reflect the imperialistic ideas Zeon preaches throughout this series. Think of the Neo Zeon War like the Crusades. Noble knights fighting for God's will, instilling their beliefs on another culture. These knights, however, are the children of Zeon, the offspring of those who truly attempted a revolution simply trying to instill their forefathers' beliefs onto others. I think of Glimmy and Lena's relationship as a microcosm for the war that is about to come. Simply one group trying to tell another the right way to live. In the hangar of the Indra, Kara touches her mobile suit. <laughs>
Yep, that's an orgasm in a kid's show. They launch. Kara fucks her mobile suit over an open line, making her men feel uncomfortable. L and Ina go to find Judo, but he is sneaking around, trying to steal a vessel to get to his sister. They end up helping him. L gets into the newly fixed Gundam Mark II. The two open the hatch and make their escape. Bicha and Mondo sneak on board the core top. They run into Gotten dragging a dummy asteroid with Kara following behind. Gotten detonates the dummy, releasing a spider net. The Mark II shoots part of the net. Kara and Judo begin fighting. The Indra class comes in and tells Double Zeta they have Lena. While they are negotiating, Bicha and Mondo and the core top release from Double Zeta. They begin fighting once again, and because of this, the Indra retreats. Bicha and Mondo uses the escape pod from the core top and they are caught by Xeon. Gotten's Gaza blows up, but Kara catches his escape pod. Even though he tried his best, she demotes him. Judo is once again upset Lena got away. And that will do it for this episode. Through the silliness, there are notes of imperialism spread throughout this anime. I thought that we would get to the Moon Moon Colony episodes this time, but it will have to wait until next time. In our next episode, the Argama will make its way to the Forgotten Colony of Side 1, and we will learn of the followers of the light. But that will do it for now, new types. Remember, you can't force trash people into your way of thinking. Peace.